Today, I'm wearing a new shirt. I am the Social Distancing World Champion 2020. And if you are a Social Distancing World Champion, let us take a moment to sing. We are the champions, my friend. Hello, my friend. I'm getting a little loopy here, but we're gonna keep going anyway because we have makeup to review. And today we are reviewing Samantha Ravindahl's brand new brand called Auric Cosmetics. I was not sent these in PR, I purchased these. But either way, my job here today is to tell you how these products performed for me so you can make the most educated, best purchasing choice for you. So if that sounds interesting to you, hang tight. We're getting into it right now. So just as a disclaimer, I'm just letting you know, I am a Samantha Ravindahl fan. I do not know her personally. I did meet her one time, but it was a very casual, not personal conversation. Uh, we don't communicate privately at all. Uh, she did comment on my What's Up In Makeup video where I talked about the brand and complimented me on how thorough I was with the information. So I very much appreciated that. Fangirled a little bit, but I am not going to let that stop me from telling you how I truly feel about this. And I do have some positive and some things that I wish were a little bit different about these products. But before we get into that, let me just tell you a little bit about what these products are and what the brand is. The brand is called Auric Cosmetics. Auric means of, relating to, or derived from gold. Quote from the website, to us gold is found when we lift each other up and work together. We believe in accepting, encouraging, and promoting all different versions of beauty. That's how we grow and thrive artistically and creatively. Then they have a set of beliefs. So the first belief is that inclusivity is not just a marketing tactic and that real skin should be seen in makeup ads. The second is that true beauty comes from being confident in who you are and what you stand for. Three, luxury should be attainable without compromising morals. And then four, art is at the heart of everything and creativity will move us forward. They call themselves a conscious brand, and to them that means, quote, our responsibility to be aware of your health and the well-being of the earth. They make sure their products are thoroughly safety vetted and approved, and they also strive to use as many recyclable materials as possible. You can buy Auric Cosmetics at magicdusk.com slash collections slash Auric. And we'll get into Magic Dusk when we get into the brand controversy section. I think I'm gonna change the name for brand controversies to like behind the brand brand because it's not really a controversy, it's just information about the brand. So let's do that officially now. It's no longer called brand controversies, it's called behind the brand, but we'll get into that in a second. The brand launched with two different products, the Glow Lust and the Smoke Reflect. The Glow Lust comes in seven shades meant for different skin tones, but Samantha specifically said that you can use multiple different shades for multiple skin tones. The Smoke Reflex do come in three shades and I do have all three shades to show you today. We're gonna do swatches, we're gonna talk about all three shades, how they perform, all of that. Glow Lusts are made in Italy and the Smoke Reflex are made in the USA. Everything is labeled with a 12 month shelf life. Now the shipping and return policy, I know a lot of Canadians were frustrated that they were paying in USD, which made it more expensive, that they had to pay customs charges, things like that because Samantha is Canadian. My understanding from what she explained was that the company Magic Dusk, which we'll, again, we'll talk about, is in the US say the pro some of the products the, the um, smoke reflex were being manufactured in the USA so they would have to pay for them to come into Canada and then they would have to then ship them a lot of the products most of the products back to the United States and it just didn't make sense financially to do that since the population of the United States is just vastly greater than the population in Canada I will link any information like videos or anything of her actually saying that down below in case I misinterpreted what she was saying but basically it was cost prohibitive to make it in Canadian dollars and to ship from Canada and all of that. There is international shipping on the products. There is a full list on her website as far as what countries. Duties and taxes will not be paid on orders to Australia, Canada, or the UK, but duties and taxes are paid to shipping to the EU. As far as returns, I was actually surprised that they have a really good
good return policy. A lot of brand new brands you can't return. So I was I was very impressed with that. She says, if you receive products from auriccosmetics.com that do not meet your expectations, please return the unused or gently used products within 30 days of your purchase for a full refund. Cruelty-free status, yes, they are a cruelty-free brand. They are a self-stating cruelty-free brand, which means that they do not have a leaping bunny certification. They are not, uh, don't have a PETA bunny, all of that. But really and truly, and this is kind of what I say in all of my videos, there's absolutely no reason for these not to be cruelty-free. They are not being shipped to mainland China to be sold there. There really isn't animal testing on cosmetics in the US. So there's just, there's no reason for them not to be cruelty-free. Now this I thought was really cool and I'm hoping to see more brands do this. I don't think I've ever seen a brand do this. Not to say that they don't, but I've just personally, I don't think I've ever seen it. It's a statement about having conflict-free mica. So I did a little bit of digging. I found a couple of websites about conflict-free mica and I will link those down below for you if you wanna learn more about it. This is what one of the websites says, quote, products that do not contain minerals that directly or indirectly finance or benefit armed groups in the Democratic Republic of the Congo or an adjoining country. I think that's really cool. I don't know how much you're familiar with the cruelties that happen in mica mining. So it's great to have that certification on there and I really hope more brands look into where their mica is sourced and then talk about that they are certified free from cruelty as far as the mica goes. This is not a vegan brand. They say only the Defiance and Ego Shadow duos are vegan and we'll talk more about that when we get into ingredient analysis. All right, are you ready to get a little behind the brand? We're just gonna talk about Magic Dusk and what the heck that is. This is another incubator brand similar to the Bespoke Beauty Company that we talked about with the Jason Wu products. On the Magic Dusk website, they say, quote, our dream is to create a digital community of products and brands that are inspired by a generation that knows you don't have to look, love, or be a certain way to fit in. And it was founded by a man named Daniel Kioi is how I'm gonna pronounce it. Hopefully I did it justice. He was the former creative director at Tarte for a really long time from January, 2012 to January, 2020. And he played a huge part in the designing of the rainforest of the sea line. Before that, he worked in visual merchandising at Bumble and Bumble. And he also was an associate art director for Smashbox. I found this fascinating. I found this interview over at Pop Sugar from 2016 with him. And he was asked his best advice for someone trying to break into the beauty industry and this is what he said follow as many social girls as possible influencers are the future of beauty so if you have a good understanding of social and know who the key players are and will be you will be a huge asset to any brand and then look and see what he did <laughs> he created this company called magic dusk but before he created a brand with samantha ravendahl he had another influencer he collabed with and that was Colleen Ballinger. I'm sorry, I always call her Colleen, but it's Colleen, Colleen Ballinger. So Colleen created two lipsticks back in 2018, and I actually have the lipsticks. <laughs> I bought these with the intent of doing a review on them, just like a really fast review. And I guess I had overpurchased that month or something, but I never ended up doing the review. So I'm actually wearing the Colleen shade today, specifically in the shade Daisy May is the name of the shade, but it's the Colleen shade. And then there was a Miranda shade and I just, I never used them. <laughs> they just sat in a drawer and it's so, so sad because they're just not shades I typically wear. So, you know, it, it ended up, I feel bad. I actually kind of forgot that that I had bought them until I read that article and I was like, oh, I actually have those. And they're actually really nice lipsticks. They're very comfortable, very hydrating. They feel really nice. The packaging is really nice. There's no scent to them at all, um, but, and they're super cute. I did try to find these for sale in case you were interested. I don't believe that this one's for sale anymore, but I do believe uh, I will put a link down below if you still want the Colleen one. But since this lipstick launch in 2018, Magic Dusk hasn't done anything. So this is the first influencer project after that. So now if you are curious who Magic Dusk was, why everything's coming from Magic Dusk, now you know. Let's talk about the packaging a little bit. The more I read about Daniel, the more the packaging made sense to me because he is an artist. He is a graphic designer. He is artistic designer. I mean, 
And Sam's very artistic too, so it makes sense to have this beautiful, beautiful box. This is raised here, um, and it's just stinking gorgeous. And then the same design here on this box. These things are just absolutely beautiful. The bottle here is also a custom bottle, and it's beautiful. It's got kind of these drippy looking things going off the side. It looks luxury. It feels luxury. Everything just, it, it screams luxury. I should note here, this is also raised and then it's raised here on the top of the smoke reflect. When we talk about opening these, in order to get this open, you really do need to grip and pull. It's not as bad as when I first got it. When I first got it, like Samantha showed in her video, it takes a little bit of pulling to really get it off, but now it's really just, it's definitely not as bad as it was the more I've done it. Now with these, let me see if I can get it up without a, I can get it up without a fingernail. It just takes a little bit of finagling, but if you can squeeze, and pull, it do, It takes a little bit of effort because it is a click closure, but if you put your fingernail under there, it's a lot easier. And then this is very, very easy to open. As far as value goes, I know that some people were under the impression that this was going to be an affordable brand. I don't think that that was the, the message that Samantha was trying to communicate. I Maybe I misunderstood, but to me it seemed like she was trying to make a more affordable luxury brand, meaning bringing them a little bit closer to high-end prices rather than luxury items. So if you're used to getting like a Dior or a, you know, Givenchy or something like that, or, or you know, a, a Chantakai, this would be less than that. So this is 1.18 ounces with the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, which is the product that everybody compares this to. I don't personally own that. You get one ounce for $44. This one, because you get 1.18 ounces for $45, it breaks down to $38.14 per ounce, which is a little bit less. What I've kind of realized the more I've used this is I would not call this a highlighter. I don't feel like it really compares to a highlighter. What I do feel like it compares to are illuminating primers. Like, so for example, the Rare Beauty Illuminating Primer. Let me just show you a couple swatches next to each other so you can see. This is very, very glowy, and this is considered a primer. So on the top, we have the Rare Beauty. On the bottom is the Auric shade. I didn't even tell you what shade I was using. This is in the shade Morganite. So this is why, I, for the value and for the ingredients, I'm not gonna compare this to too many actual highlighters, I'm more going to compare them to illuminating primers because I feel like that's really the category this fits into. So for the Rare Beauty, this of course is the smaller size. There is a larger one ounce size and this is more at a high-end price point where Sam's is supposed to be more of a luxury price point. So of course it's significantly less. The Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Primer, again, significantly less. Where we get close is the Estee Lauder Illuminator, very, very close there. And the Dr. Brandt Illuminating Primer are very close there as well. For the Smoke Reflect, I know a lot of people are comparing these to the Tom Ford Duos, which I don't own either. I'm more of a high-end person. I'm not really as much into the, the luxury stuff. I own very little luxury makeup, so I don't own that. But let's talk about the value. The total amount of product with the powder plus the cream is gonna give us 6.65 grams for $39, which leads us to $5.87 per gram, which is quite expensive. It is in the very high end of the high end range to the lower end of the luxury range. When we compare that to the Tom Ford, the cream plus the powder is gonna give you $7.39 per gram. I do have one of the Dose of Colors Ideal Duos to share with you. This one is a little bit different in that the cream is on the top and then on the bottom is a loose glittery eyeshadow there. So the price here is actually quite expensive at $7.14 per gram. So definitely still a better value with the Auric. And then finally, someone mentioned to me on Twitter, the Surat Prismatic prismatic eyes. That one you get only 3.5 grams and it comes down to $16.57 per gram, which is insanely expensive, but it's Surat. So, you know, that's to be expected. So my question with ingredients, with the glow loss is how similar is this 
to the Hollywood Flawless Filter. And this is just my conjecture. This is my thinking as someone who is completely out of this particular process, but knows a little bit about the back end of making makeup. And we've talked about this before in that sometimes brands will take an ingredient deck and they will kind of recreate it in their own lab. It won't be the same, but it'll be kind of similar because the ingredient deck is public. So you can kind of use it as a base and then tweak it. That's what I think happened with this. I think that the Hollywood Flawless Filter was used as a base, but then changed to be different. This is not the same as the Hollywood Flawless Filter. It's just not, but it's kind of the same idea. When we look at the ingredient lists next to each other, the base is basically the same, except for what Sam had mentioned in her video, which was that the Hollywood Flawless Filter has a lot more mica in it, has a lot more shine. Sam mentioned that she thought that it didn't look as good on deeper skin tones with that much mica in it, so she she pulled down the amount of mica. But basically the base of this ingredient is very, very similar to the Hollywood Flawless Filter. And let's talk a little bit about what that is. So we've got water, we've got a product thickener, we've got a humectant, we've got a moisturizer slash humectant, and then we have squalane, which is an ingredient I really love to see in skincare. What it does is it mimics your skin's sebum or the oils on your skin to help balance your skin to kind of tell your skin, hey, I don't need any more oil. I'm good, I'm solid. It can also act as an antibacterial, it can act as a moisturizer, an antioxidant, and it also can help fight free radical damage. I'm not saying that that is 100% that this will do all of those things, but that ingredient has been shown to do those things. So it's possible you could get some of those benefits in this product. There's also glycosaminoglycans in here, which I thought was kind of cool. It's a skin replenishing and restoring ingredient. But the only warning I have on this is only if you're sensitive. There is a pigment in here called bismuth oxychloride. It is a pearly pigment. It is a very uh, sharp pigment. It's a, they call it a microcrystalline structure that has kind of some points to it. So some people will get irritation if they use bismuth oxychloride. So I like to mention it. I have absolutely zero problems personally with that ingredient, but I know some people who watch my videos do, so I like to mention it. Honestly, uh, looking at the ingredients of the Smoke Reflect, nothing really that stands out as being something I want to share with you, to be honest. I mean, it's a typical eyeshadow formula. There's nothing really interesting. I mean, in the cream, there's silica, so you may get some oil absorbing properties there, but it is so far down, you may not. It may just be to thicken the product to make it a little bit smoother. The only one I definitely do want to mention though is with Temper, which is this one. This one does have that bismuth oxychloride we talked about a second ago, and it does have carmine in it, which is made from crushed bugs. It's been used in cosmetics forever, but some people don't like carmine in their products. So that is in the shade Temper. All right, my friends, it is time to show you swatches. I want to do things a little bit differently because this is such a multi-use product. I wanted to be able to show you all of the things. So I'll put some uh, like text, do you know, make sure you know what's happening and what I'm testing. Right now I have on this side of my face, foundation mixed with the Glow Lust. And then on this side of my face, it is just the foundation. And then on both sides, I tapped a little bit of the Glow Lust on top of my cheekbones, but you'll see all all of that whole process happening in the swatches. I'm also going to show you swatches of both of the different colors individually in each pot and then also the cream topped with the shimmer. So all of that is coming at you right now. Wanna be free of this heart. Yeah. Wanna feel your arms around me. I need you more. I need you here more than I would like to admit. Let's forget about tomorrow, yeah Should I hide away forever? Should I close my eyes and never again Hold you tight, call you mine Think about you every time I remember that it's over, yeah You never break, you never lie You never ever scared of the dark so why am I the one who cries? I'm so afraid to be left behind. I think about you a lot. It's almost like I can't stop. Can't stop. Yeah, yeah. You never lose an argument. 
So I've been trying hard to pretend that I'm okay. It's just a phase, and everything is going just great. I think about you a lot. It's almost like I can't stop. Can't stop. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Editing Jen here. I'm not usually here live and in person, but Editing Jen realized that I made some mistakes in the way that I swatched a few days ago, so I'm back and I'm going to swatch them correctly to make sure you have accurate representation. So let's go ahead and get into those swatches. I always knew that this would happen, yeah. You would find a new distraction. Then I would like to admit Can we let go of tomorrow? Yeah You never break, you never lie You never ever scared of the dark So why am I the one who cries? I'm so afraid to be left behind I think about you a lot It's almost like I can't stop Can't stop Yeah, yeah You never lose an argument so i've been trying hard to pretend that i'm okay it's just a phase and everything is going just great i think about you a lot it's almost like i can't stop can't stop yeah yeah that you found those swatches super, super helpful. And now I'd like to give you something else that I hope you'll find helpful is a demo of how I got this look today. I am not a makeup artist by any means. I am just a mom in my basement playing with makeup. So that is, keep that in mind as you're watching, that this is just, you know, regular makeup user using it. I tried to use as many of these shades as possible so you could see how they work. And yeah. Let's get into that right now. Show me love, put your body on the top of mine and hold me like you'll never let me go. It feels like I've been giving you the best of me and you just keep on letting me down. Can't taste it with your lips on mine that you don't love me like you did that night. I'm so nervous that you'll never feel the same and you'll never find a place in my arms. Hey, show me. Feel free. 
All right, my friend, it is my time to take my leave of you. It is currently about 2.45. I've had this makeup on since about two o'clock. So I will come back at the end of the night to kind of show you how this wore throughout the day, show you any creasing. I have worn these all individually as like the pair of the cream with the, the powder on top. I've also been playing with this quite a bit. So I have a lot of opinions on the formulas, what I like, what I don't like. So full reviews, coming after the wear test. So it'll just be a second for you. It's gonna be many hours for me. Ready? One, two, three, go. Day is done. Okay. So I am still social distancing world champion. Today, I actually went to my first drive-by birthday party ever. My son's friend had this thing where the mom and the dad and the kid stood outside with their masks on and all of the friends lined up in cars and we honked our horns and yelled, happy birthday, and like passed things out the window. <laughs> it was the weirdest birthday thing I think I've ever done, but it worked and it made the child happy. So it's like, you know, you do what you gotta do. So, still a social distancing champion, but we are not here to talk about that. We are here to check in on the makeup. So let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm gonna get my mirror and we're gonna see what is happening on my face. Okay, let me look, let me see. Okay, I'm definitely getting my transferring that I usually get, but it's really not too bad. And I don't feel like I have a ton of glitter fallout down under my eyes. Even other times I've worn this, I haven't had a ton of glitter particles on my face through the day. And the thing is, is that they're so fine. You really have to kind of turn your head the right way in order to see them. And they're just, they're so teeny tiny. Um, but overall, I think my eye look still looks just as good as when I put it on. I think it looks awesome. And that's pretty consistent through the rest of the wear test. As far as the glow lust, I can still see it highlighted on my cheekbones and trying it other times. I felt like it definitely lasted the best with a base of foundation. So if I mixed it in with foundation or if I topped it on top of foundation, lasting power was the best, followed by if I mixed it in with a moisturizer and it definitely lasted the least when I just put it on bare skin. And, and that just makes sense with just the way products work. I'm not surprised at all. But there are, there are some other things I wanna talk about. So let's go ahead and get into the full review. Okay, so the first thing you have to decide in your mind is if these prices are worth it to you, just period. <laughs> because if no matter how good they are, these prices are a way out of where you feel comfortable, these are not going to be a recommend. Just period. Because in the end, it's liquid and powder and cream. That, that's what you're buying. And if you could never pay that much money for a liquid powder and cream, I don't recommend it to you. So let's throw that out and let's talk about if this is within your price point that you don't mind spending, is it worth it? Let's start with Glow Lust. So this is going to be best for people that really just want a little bit of subtlety to add a little bit of glow to their face. Makes sense. I love how she came out with multiple shades that would look better on different skin tones. I think that was very, very smart of her. What this is not is a super glowy highlight. So if you're looking for that, you're not not gonna get that with this product. I have to tell you, I don't really like the way this looks on its own. I don't even really like the way it looks with moisturizer. It's just a little too glowy for me. If you have very dull skin, you'll probably like this better as far as being mixed with a moisturizer or just on your bare skin, but not nearly as much as like the Rare Beauty one. That was out of control. This one's definitely more subtle. Where I like this the best is definitely topped over top of my foundation. That is my favorite way to use this. It kind of reminds me of like the Amrezy highlighter where it's just a little bit of glow, a little bit of shine, a little bit of luminosity without being overpowering. And I feel like it pairs very well with matte foundations. I really like it actually with this CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made foundation that I love because it kind of makes it a little bit less flat. It gives my face a little bit more dimension without being out of control. So do I think this is worth the price for me? Yeah, I do. Um, not by a ton, but I do really like it. I don't think I'm gonna be purchasing any more shades, but I do like having it and I'm happy to have it. Okay, the Smoke Reflect. 
I want to make sure I preface this by saying I love Samantha and any critiques I have of this product have absolutely no nothing to do with my love for her. I'm just reviewing an inanimate object. Okay, disclaimer done. I know some people are still gonna be mad at me. I don't love these. I like them, but I don't love them. They are just meant to be a topper. They're not meant to be an opaque shadow. I did find that the gray one, this one here in Ego, is much more opaque. I think you saw that in the swatches than the other ones. I also kind of wish that she had done a little bit different, but a little more different between these, maybe one even lighter or uh, maybe a duochrome, that would have been super cool. Um, but I, I don't feel like there's enough difference in these two that I would want to own them both. That being said though, I do really like the shades that she picked. I think that they're gonna be universal for a lot of people. Lasting power, like we saw a minute ago on these, is wonderful. They they do exactly what they're supposed to do. They stay where they're supposed to stay. I do feel like I'm getting some hard pan on this one and I'm not 100% sure why. I don't know if it was because of the brush I used or because of the oils in my fingers or something, but my one in defiance is it's not coming off right. Um, it's just it's just not. I feel like I need to scrape the top off in order to get to the product and this was so expensive. I don't want to have to scrape the top off. So I need to figure out what the heck I did, maybe I'll contact their customer service and ask them, you know, is there anything I could have done to it to make it be like that because it's the only one. The other two are just fine. They are nice toppers on top of the creams and I do kind of like them by themselves, but I don't love them. Now, speaking of the creams, okay. It took me a while to figure out how was best to use this. Intuitively, I wanted to use a flat brush with these. Don't do that. Do what Samantha says and use a little bit fluffier of an eyeshadow brush. The one I used today, the Smith one, this is the Smith 256. Even ones that are a little fluffier than this, that works really well. It picks up a lot of the product and I feel like that fluffiness is really necessary to get it onto the lid. One thing I like about them is that you can use a fluffy brush while they're wet and kind of smoke it out in the corner. Another thing is that they play well with powder shadows, which not all cream products do, so I definitely appreciate appreciate that. What I don't really like about the formula is just the moussiness of them. It's the difference between like a whipped cream cheese and just like a regular cream cheese in the tub if you've ever had whipped cream cheese. <laughs> That's like the best thing I can think of. It's when you pull it off on your finger, it's just kind of chunky and that leads to an uneven application. And I find that with the brush as well, that it just doesn't go on smoothly like a lot of cream eyeshadow products that I've used in the past. But once you do get the blend on, them, it blends out beautifully. It's just the application is a little trickier than I like. I also have a little bit of trouble using it like I did with the, uh, the like a brow brush, like a liner brush, uh, you know, the thin angle kind. It just moves the product around. It doesn't really pick up the product right. So I'm having trouble using it on my lower lash line. I don't think I'm gonna be using this on the lower lash line. I have tried using it as eyeliner on the top lid. It seems to go on a little bit better on the top lid. Like, just, I guess because it's maybe it's just a little bit flatter of a surface than where I'm trying to get it on my lash line. But I, I don't know, I just don't, I don't love it. And it makes me really sad because I want to love it so much. And I can get an entire palette for the cost of just one of these at $39. It's, it's very, very expensive. But for some people, $39 really isn't that big of a deal. So again, if that's your price point, if that's your comfort zone, and you like you know, what I've said that are the positives of these, you may really like these. I don't dislike them. I like them. I just, you know, I'm not super pumped about them. <laughs> And I think, I think that if she came out with like a duochrome one, I might buy it. But as far as other shades that are just kind of typical eyeshadow shades, I, unfortunately, I think I'm gonna pass. At this point, my friend, it is your turn in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness, where we help each other not to buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it. I would love to know your thoughts on these products. If you've tried them, please, 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 I would love to know your thoughts down below because maybe you have oily lids or dry lids that I don't have, different skin tone than I have, different age than I am, that'll affect your experience with these products. I can only speak from my own point of view, so please leave your point of view down below. And if you haven't tried them, are you interested in trying them? Do you think this is something you're interested in buying? I would love to know that as well. And with that being said, it is time for me to go, but you do not have to go if you don't want to. You can go ahead and watch the videos that YouTube is providing for you right over here and hang out a little longer. But if you do have to go, because you've got stuff to do, maybe, maybe you got to do some more social distancing. 
I don't know. Thank you so much for hanging out as long as you did. Mad love to you, and I'll see you in a video very, very soon.